with a great deal of uh, trepidation, I, I want to end with this kind of manifesto, really, in a way, or a series of points. So, point one. Since 1960, when the French geographer Jean Gutmann first coined the term megalopolis, automotive regional urbanization has become the universal land settlement pattern of capitalism. Stimulated by the mass ownership of the car, megalopolis, megalopoli are coming into being all over the world today, accommodating populations of around 20 million apiece. I'm referring, I don't know how what is the population of Hong Kong, but you know, Bombay, Mexico City, Jakarta, uh, etc., etc., you know, they're all 20 million uh, uh, regional urbanizations. And uh, uh, North American regional urbanizations top out at around 5 million, more or less, at the moment. And, and uh, it's interesting that, uh, and I mentioned this in the last chapter of the book that uh, Tao mentioned, you know, that I think the statistic is that 3 million acres of agricultural land are lost each year in the United States through suburbanization, so there's also that dimension, you know. And um, I touch on this book of, of Melvin Weber, American planner, which I'd never liked, called Explorations in Urban Structures, 1964. It's Melvin Weber who coins the term non-place urban realm, you know. Point two, under these circumstances, the stratagem of the time-honored master plan as an instrument of urban design would seem to be untenable, particularly given the relatively limited resources available for public intervention at a civic scale, along with the volatile rate of spontaneous growth and change in most urban areas. While master plans are surely still viable with regard to infrastructural organization, in terms of auto routes, rail networks, sewage lines, electrification, distribution of water, etc., etc., they have Precious little purchase today on the organization and consolidation of urban form. Three, the de facto emergence of megalopolitan patterns of land settlement presents us with two alternative strategies as far as the future of urban development is concerned. A, the current ad hoc proliferation of ill-related, relatively isolated freestanding objects that invariably go to make the non-place. Or the counter thesis B of a place creating mega form, you know, that introduces a kind of break, a difference into what is otherwise a continuous proliferation of objects. Four, it should be clear from the wide range of mega forms cited in the foregoing that a mega form may come into being at quite different scales and thereby assume a distinctly different place creating potential, depending not only on the scale, but also on the programmatic complexity of the form in each case. Five, a seminal attribute of the megaform is its quintessential horizontality, which is integrated as much as possible with the site on which it sits. At times, the topographic character may be so dominant as to become a virtual landscape in itself, as in the case of, and I don't show this, the Iguilada Cemetery of Enrique Marais and Carmen Pinos, but I do show, of course, Seattle is an example of that, the, the sculpture part. And then, where am I with all this, with my numbers? Six, by definition, a megaform is restricted in extent and lends itself to being realized in a limited time period, which I think is a very important uh, dimension of the idea. Seven, as with 19th century arcade, the megaform has a capacity of providing a public domain in what is otherwise a totally privatized, processal, and largely placeless environment. Eight, within the space endlessness of the megalopolis, a megaform may serve as a kind of landmark feature, like a geological outcrop, outcrop as it is implicit in the case of Hans Bolsig's House of Friendship, projected for Istanbul in 1917. Nine, it would seem that certain contemporary building programs lend themselves to being accommodated within megaforms. I have in mind universities, uh, sports uh, facilities, air terminals, uh, transit interchanges, railway stations, shopping centers, uh, hospitals, uh, etc. Ten, while megaforms would appear to be most readily applicable to the megalopolitan uh, situation, they may also be integrated into traditional urban fabric, and then I come back, you know, to Rockefeller Center, New York, etc. That's it. That's the spiel. Thank you. Thank you.